Oh, hello, this is Tak Chong from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. About two years ago, my friend Tony gave me a challenge. He told me that he loves salmon, but he finds that it takes too long for him to cook salmon. He said that normally he cooks salmon either uh, on a grill or in the oven. And occasionally he will cook salmon in a frying pan on the stovetop. After he adopted my fast cooking system, uh, he wondered would it be possible for him to stir fry salmon. As well as to cook the salmon with other vegetables, uh, that will create an entire meal uh, in less than 10 minutes. Up to that point, I have yet to stir fry salmon in a wok. And the main reason is that it is always difficult to stir fry fish, particularly salmon, because when you stir fry them, they have a tendency to break apart. However, I have cooked salmon in the wok. I use the wok as a frying pan to cook the salmon. And I have been thinking about to develop a technique of to stir fry salmon, particularly with other food ingredients such as different kinds of vegetables, particularly if I can cook the whole dish uh, in less than 10 minutes and present it as an entire meal. So here is a salmon dish that I cooked recently uh, with uh, different kinds of vegetables. The entire dish is being cooked in less than 10 minutes. And when I showed this technique to Tony, uh, he was excited. He told me that this is the perfect salmon dish much better than any other method that he has used in the past, and I could not agree with him more. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how I cook this all-in-one salmon dish. First and foremost, the quality of salmon is essential. I use salmon that has never been frozen. I purchased our salmon from Audi, a small local supermarket chain. Uh, the quality of the salmon so far has been excellent each time. I cut the salmon into 2 inch strips and then I slice them into pieces about 1 inch in width. Uh, the salmon I use are come with skins and it is essential that you use a pair of sharp knife so you can cut right through the skins. Uh, here I use a steel knife but I find that the best knife for cut through the skin uh, is a ceramic knife. Uh, here is 8 ounces of salmon. I find that it's just the perfect amount uh, to cook with vegetables that will be enough for a meal of two. Uh, the salmon that I normally purchase comes in a one pound portion. Uh, I divide it into two meals uh, over about a week period. I will prep them as soon as I uh, bring them back from the supermarket so they will be all ready to go. And for the vegetables that are going to go with this dish, first I'm going to have some eggplant and then I'm also going to include some Brussels sprouts. Both of them are my favorite vegetables. And next, I found some thinly sliced mushroom in my advanced prepping and of course I also have some cherry tomatoes. Now this is the advantage of advanced prepping. Now I have everything all ready to go. So let's go in the kitchen and get started. I'm going to cook this dish in my Cucina 14 inch stainless steel wok. I'm going to start out with 2 tablespoons of canola oil. I'm going to season the wok uh, with my spot seasoning method to create a non stick cooked surface. Uh, this is probably the most efficient method for seasoning a wok. I do this each time before I cook so that it will guarantee that I will have a non stick cooked surface. Basically, I heat up the wall until the oil starts to smoke gently and then I turn down the heat. I let the oil to smoke for another 15 seconds. This is the time when the wok is being seasoned. And then I turn the heat back to the high and now I am ready to cook. I use a offset spatula to layer the salmon onto the surface of the wok, making sure that the skin side of the salmon go down first. I want to fry the skin first to create a crispy texture and that makes the skin very tasty. So the basic strategy here is that I'm going to fry the salmon first with the skin side down until it is about probably 50% done 
and I want to turn it over to fry the other side. And the reason of not cutting up the salmon in any smaller size than this, because this will keep the inside of the salmon moist and tender. After frying the salmon for about 30 seconds, I start to put other vegetables right around the salmon. I'm going to start out with some Brussels sprouts. Now the advantage of a wok is obvious here because the wok has a very large surface area, so you can actually cook multiple ingredients all at the same time. Next, I add some eggplant to the wok. Uh, I use probably about uh, two cups of Brussels sprouts as well as about two cups of eggplant. I cut the Brussels sprouts as well as the eggplant into about bite size. Uh, this will facilitate their cooking. Uh, both of these food ingredients has excellent shelf life, particularly after you have prepped them and stored them in plastic container, and they usually can last up to 10 days. At this point, a pair of tongs are very helpful because I use the tongs specifically to stir fry the eggplants and the Brussels sprouts without disturbing the salmon in the center of the wok. This method is a demonstration of sequential cooking. I put the food ingredients first in the wok that would require a longer time period to cook, and I put other ingredients at a later time. So um, I continue to stir fry the vegetables uh, just around the outside of the salmon. It is important that you continue to stir fry the vegetables because otherwise they are going to get burned. As you can see, some of them start to take on some charring. Uh, but that's quite all right uh, because the charring will actually give them better flavor. The important thing is that you do not want them to burn too much. Uh, by now, the salmon is probably about 50% done. I move all the vegetables to one side because I want to have some space. I'm going to flip the salmon. Uh, before I'm going to flip the salmon, I'm going to add a little bit more cooking oil uh, because the uh, eggplant has consumed quite a bit of cooking oil. Uh, there's one way to tell whether the salmon is cooked or not. Uh, if it is not cooked well enough, you will have a difficult time in flipping the salmon. Frying the salmon will seal the external surface of the pieces, make them easier to flip. Okay, so far so good. And the skin of the salmon has been nicely fried to a great crispy texture. Now I flip the salmon over to fry the other side. Uh, from this point on, it's going to be cooked very rapidly. Uh, this method has several advantage. One is that uh, it allows the salmon to stay moist and uh, tender inside. And secondly, because the pieces have been cut into smaller size, uh, they are more evenly cooked. As compared to if you cook the entire piece of salmon, some part of the salmon that is thinner is likely to be overcooked, where the part in the middle of the salmon that is thicker uh, tend to be undercooked. And we both like our salmon cooked just right, so I'm very careful not to overcook them. Okay, now we are almost at the final stretch in cooking this dish. So the last food ingredients I'm going to add is some thinly sliced white mushroom. This is another example of sequential cooking uh, because I want to only lightly cook the mushroom. And this is the reason why I add them toward the end of the cooking process. With my oil squeeze bottle, I add a little bit more cooking oil right over the mushroom because mushrooms tend to absorb oil. And now I uh, switch to my wok spatula to stir fry all the contents together. As you can see now, uh, because the salmon has been cooked uh, in such a way that the outside of the salmon has been sealed, so they do not fall apart easily so that I can stir fry everything together. Okay. Now I am ready to season the dish. I'm going to season it with a combination of uh, two tablespoons of uh, oyster sauce, one tablespoon of hoisin sauce, and I have added a new sauce, uh, which is a Panda Express orange sauce, which I'm going to use about one tablespoon. Uh, this is my latest flavoring strategy. Uh, it's part of my flavor chasing because I continually look for flavor that I enjoy. 
and over time, I know my tastes change. And the final ingredients that I'm going to add to this dish is some cherry tomatoes. I do not cut up the cherry tomatoes. I add them in whole. And the reason is that when I lightly cook the cherry tomatoes, it will stay intact. So uh, when I eat them, I bite into them. It gives me a very rich spurge of tomato juice. And I enjoy that a great deal. So by this time, the dish is done. Uh, the final step uh, is that I shut off the heat and then I get out my water squeeze bottle and I'm going to do a little bit of spot cleaning. I'm looking for uh, anything that might have burned uh, to the surface of the wok, which is not very much, and I'm going to squeeze water directly over that area and I'm using my uh, wok spatula to detach them. Uh, this will make cleaning the wok much easier later on. At the same time, I'm also returning the flavor back to the dish. And by only adding a very small of water at a time, I'm also creating a light sauce. Uh, so right here, I have a complete meal uh, with the salmon and the vegetables and everything are all in one dish. And this entire dish is cooked in under 10 minutes. Now, my wife always loves salmon. Uh, salmon to me, uh, I am more of uh, equivocal about it. And uh, I think for the main reason is that uh, I do not like the salmon flavor just by themselves. But now when I cook this dish with all the other vegetable with it and with the seasoning that I use, I just love salmon. It presents me almost like an entirely uh, different uh, dish. And furthermore, by stir-frying the salmon and the vegetable together, it also made the vegetable more tasty. And I love that taste in the vegetables. And since my wife loves salmon more than I do, I usually let her eat most of the salmon. This is truly a dish of a win-win combination. Again, you can treat this as a template, as in the case of my fast cooking system. Uh, the word fast stands for flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir frying, and template based cooking. And using this cooking system, you can create many different versions of this basic dish. I post a video each day uh, to introduce my fast cooking system to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine. And if you'd like to learn more as well as to adopt my fast cooking system, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.